Hi, this is Gully Gofarp. Thank you very much for joining me here today. Today I'm going to be talking about heavy metal poisoning and how diet and supplements and natural activities can help remove these toxins. So there are 23 heavy metals, including um, many that you probably haven't heard of. Um, well, heavy metals uh, may be released from natural sources or industrial waste. And there are various ways you can expose your body to heavy metals. Certain foods, medicines, air pollution, water pollution are some of the ways that um, you expose your body to toxic metals. And since these metals can exist in the environment as vapor, liquid, or metal, uh, they can be easily absorbed. Now, heavy metals such as uh, mercury, lead, cadmium, nickel, and arsenic um, pose a consistent health threat to humans. These heavy metals can accumulate in the soft tissues and the bones of our body. And in toxic amounts, they'll cause poisoning and severe health damage, including neurological, neurodevelopmental, psychological, and reproductive harm. Now, toxic metal exposure leads to harmful effects on almost every organ and system in our body. Unfortunately, our food is the primary source of heavy metal exposure in non-occupational um, exposed populations, of course. Lead may contaminate food and water, as well as the air and many other objects. Lead used to be very, very common. It is found in many things around us, including pipes, paint, uh, gasoline, uh, emissions from cars and factories. Um, until we finally understood how toxic lead really is, Unfortunately, lead still exists in dangerous amounts in many areas, especially in older, more impoverished communities. Lead affects the body slowly and unnoticeably. So if you occupy an old building or a home, it can contain potentially dangerous amounts of lead. Lead paint was banned in uh, the United States in 1978. So buildings that are older than this often still have lead in their paint surface, which uh, results in lead exposure as a result of breathing these airborne particles of paint dust. Um, also the deterioration of these walls um, and also when one is doing remodeling of a house, there can be exposure to a lot of um, lead. Also, drinking water may be contaminated with lead, um, as many service pipes or plumbing joints uh, have been sealed together with lead solder. Also, children with elevated um, blood lead levels have been found to have lower intellectual capacities compared to their peers who do not suffer from any lead toxicity. Also, iron deficiency will increase lead absorption a four to five times, um, which also further compl complicates lead toxicity. And pregnant women must be especially aware that lead affects their child's mental development. Usually symptoms of lead poisoning are not noticed before the damage is already done. Research also shows the connection between lead exposure and weight gain, especially obesity and fat accumulation in the liver. Toxicity of lead is seen at very low levels. Lead exposure is now found to cause intellectual decrements at a very low blood level of under two microgram per deciliter. Even though the blood lead reference level for treatment of, uh, of exposure to it in children is five micrograms per deciliter. And chelation therapy, which is the therapy that helps remove toxic metals, is only recommended at 45 microgram per deciliter. Now, the average blood lead level among children between ages one and five in the United States is one and a half micrograms per deciliter. So let's also talk about arsenic. It is found in contaminated air, soil, water, and um, food sources. Um, uh, sources of arsenic include those, um, especially places with high use of pesticides and fertilizers and these foods as well. Uh, it, it accumulates in the ground. It's also found in paint and in some medication. Chronic arsenic exposure can cause skin, um, bladder, and lung cancer. Arsenic toxicity is also associated with neurological and preliminary and heart diseases. Arsenic in drinking water is also carcinogenic, causing cancer in humans. Cadmium is another um, heavy metal. It's a group one uh, carcinogen. 
um, and it is water soluble so it has many uses and is found in many places including um, uh, coal burning smoke fertilizers batteries plastics and metal coatings it is also found in cigarettes um, another uh, heavy metal is mercury which is really a toxic heavy metal found in some foods beverages dental fillings pharmaceuticals vaccines fluorescent light bulbs it's also found in caustic soda which you may use to open um, blocked pipes and it's also used during paper production mercury is found both naturally in the environment and as a byproduct of human production it is converted to methyl mercury by bacteria and this methyl mercury is a toxin that contaminates large bodies of water and the fish within this water is uh, is contaminated as well um, and this contamination can pass through the food chain to people who regularly consume these fatty fish mercury toxicity has been linked to impaired brain and kidney function um, tiredness eye and skin and airway irritation difficulty breathing sleeping thinking and weight loss uh, difficulty in weight loss um, nickel is another heavy metal it's found in cheap jewelry cosmetics um, keys eyeglasses paper clips pens um, braces that are used to straighten teeth in zippers belts buckles and electrical equipment including cell phones nickel can cause n lung and nasal and stomach cancer now uh, Although it is best to ensure that these heavy metals uh, in our body don't accumulate to toxic levels with um, habits and lifestyle choices, it's best absolutely to avoid them. Um, but if you can't avoid them, fortunately, we can also help our body remove these toxic men uh, metals once we are exposed. Um, so firstly, I'll go into ways to help minimize exposure to heavy metals with diet supplements and natural activities. So first of all, you wanna avoid excessive fish consumption. Big fish, such as tuna fish, they concentrate these toxins inside them. They keep eating the smaller and smaller fishes, which, um, which have, um, so they really actually collect a large amount of uh, toxins in them, including heavy uh, metals. C chronic consumption of big fish may cause heavy metal poisoning. So you should consume fish no more than once a week or none if you're suffering from acute heavy metal toxicity. Uh, you also want to consider amalgam filling replacement. I'll talk about that in a different video. You also want to bring home a water filtration system. Drinking some fish and water is crucial for health. There's no doubt about that. However, the source of water you drink um, especially on a regular basis is of grave importance and lead for example may originate in old drinking water pipes as I mentioned and water purification systems from your home can help remove these heavy metals from your drinking water reverse osmosis under the sink and ever pure systems uh, remove most contaminants from water including heavy metals I recommend having such a system installed in your home instead of going for plastic bottles since plastics also seep other toxins into your body and are hardly highly harmful to the environment and um, the, uh, the harm we cause to the environment will always come back through the air we breathe the foods we eat and the water we drink everything is connected now you also want to avoid smoking because cigarette smoke contains many toxic chemicals and the heavy metal cadmium um, which is one of the more potent um, poisonous components in cigarettes heavy metal toxicity is one way that cigarettes cause cancer and other diseases so you want to stop this destructive habit as soon as you can to quit smoking I recommend uh, joining an Allen Carr program um, which many of my clients have found extremely helpful you also want to avoid fluorescent light bulbs and batteries um, fluorescent light bulbs have mercury in them leds use less energy than incandescent uh, light bulbs and even less than compact compact um, fluorescent light bulbs and do not contain any mercury in them however lead uh, lighting does contain other heavy metals such as lead and nickel with the highest level found in uh, these red leds like we put on uh, um, like 
they're used for decorations, especially um, Christmas uh, decorations and also Halloween decorations use these. So I recommend going for healthier options. Um, avoid using these red LEDs and um, also avoid coming into contact with um, broken brake lamps often found on the street after a car accident or in a garage. So if you have a broken LED light, light bulb, um, avoid breathing in its fumes and sweep the debris uh, while wearing gloves. And um, also a mask is also best. Um, you should also dispose of the pieces um, and the broom even that you use to sweep up these pieces uh, in uh, hazardous waste. You also want to check the ingredients of medications and vaccines as much as you can and herbal medicines before using them as these may, can, may contain heavy metals. You want to also check your home, um, uh, for example, for lead, if it was built before 1978, as I mentioned, you want to check your pipes and the paint and replace them if they are made from lead as much as you can. Um, also, do, uh, which is, it's quite crucial actually, especially if you're raising young, young children. Um, you also want to just detoxify your body from heavy metals. Uh, although our body is armed with biochemical intracellular detoxification systems for eliminating heavy metals, um, you want to increase these, especially in your diet. For example, antioxidants, glutathione, and ascorbic acid, vitamin C, are essential um, to this, to this uh, detoxifying system that we have in our body. Um, therefore, taking antioxidants and antioxidant-rich foods is crucial for removing heavy metals from your body. Once the heavy metals are reduced and partially detoxified by these enzymes, these antioxidant enzymes, they become more water-soluble and the metals are then transported into the bile and the urine in the intestines to be removed from the body. So anything that promotes also healthy bile flow and a health, healthy microbiome is crucial. Um, let's talk about these uh, nutrients. Uh, for example, vitamin C, as I said, is a potent antioxidant protecting the DNA um, from any damage. It plays a role in reducing metal-induced toxicity by suppressing oxidative stress, preventing free radical damage caused by heavy metals. Um, vitamin C also helps eliminate toxins from the body by converting converting them into a more water-soluble um, uh, form, which helps them be removed through the urine. Um, uh, also, also, and also through your sweat. Uh, you may also increase vitamin C in your diet by eating more citrus fruits, bell peppers, berries, tomatoes, cruciferous vegetables. And you can also supplement with vitamin C three times a week to avoid toxicity. Um, a thousand uh, milligrams uh, daily is great for people who suffer from acute toxicity. Also, copper and zinc supplementation um, is important. Your nutritional status of these essential minerals um, influences your gastrointestinal absorption of heavy metals. Having, having sufficient levels of these nutrients helps avoid the absorption of heavy metals in your body. And you can ensure adequate levels of these nutrients by taking a tablet of spirulina five times a, a week and a supplement of zinc, either in sulfate or in picolinate form, um, three times a week. You don't need more than 10, um, 10 milligrams is fine, um, 10 to 15 milligrams of, of zinc. Um, you can also find these uh, two essential minerals in legumes, potatoes, nuts, seeds, and whole grains. You also want to increase dietary fiber intake. Dietary fiber is crucial for health and fiber is best known for keeping your bowel movements regularly, regular and maintaining bowel health. Fiber is also essential for helping lower cholesterol levels and controlling blood sugar levels and achieving healthy weight because dietary fiber is crucial to the digestive process. That's why studies have found that it also helps uh, reduce heavy metal accumulation in the body. Without fiber supporting bowel movements, the toxins, including heavy metals, will remain in the colon and be absorbed into the bloodstream. I recommend increasing your daily fiber intake by switching to a whole food diet. Consume whole grains, whole pasta, um, whole uh, brown rice, and more. And of course, eating more fruits and vegetables. 
You can start your mornings off with a breakfast that contains uh, oats, whole wheat, or barley, which boosts liver function and detoxification. Uh, dietary fiber has even been evaluated as an alternative um, to chelation therapy. Um, uh, Usually, there is administration of chelation a a chelating agents, which uh, bind to the heavy metals and um, help remove them from the body. Dietary fiber also helps remove uh, toxic metals in this way. And, and also, dietary fiber um, modulates the microbiome, and there are microbes that help reduce the levels of mercury, for example, in the brain and in the blood. The best type of fiber for protection from de uh, and detoxification from heavy metals is insoluble fiber, since it add, adds bulk to your stools and speeds up the passage of foods and um, everything you consume through your stomach and intestines. Insoluble fiber is found in fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. Now, soluble fiber not insoluble, soluble um, fiber does exactly the opposite. And although it's beneficial for preventing many chronic diseases, it has been shown um, to actually increase the absorption of heavy metals um, in the intestines. So go for the insoluble fiber. You also want to take probiotics. Whenever the gut microbiome is varied and healthy, um, ingesting um, even elemental or metallic mercury will not lead to clinical consequences. However, people, on the other hand, with unhealthy, unvaried microbiomes will get severe irritation from ingesting um, mercury, uh, elemental or metallic mercury. Also, a heavy metal exposure will alter even a healthy microbiome, influencing bile acid composition. So heavy metal exposure will impair the microbiome, impairing bile production and leading to heavy metal recirculation. I recommend uh, therefore, supplementing with oral probiotics, if you are exposed to heavy metals, if you smoke or if you are living in a zone with heavy, um, with a lot of pollution, and if you live in older houses. The best probiotic supplement is one that has 100 billion microbes and um, also known as um, colony forming units and at least 10 different microbial strains so you add to the variety of the micro uh, microbes um, that live in your gut. If you have a heavy load of these toxic metals, you can take 100 billion um, colony forming units daily, a hun uh, one um, capsule which has 100 billion um, of these uh, colony forming units a day for one month after exposure. Also hyperbaric oxygen treatment. Um, in an oxygen chamber under increased pressure increases um, oxygen bioavailability and has antimicrobial and many other properties. It helps um, remove toxic metals from cells and reduces their poisonous effects on the body. And you can find hyperbaric chambers in your area um, on the internet and you want to book several appointments um, twice a week for three months to ensure that it is beneficial and it's working. Now also there is chelation therapy, which I mentioned um, a few times. There is chelation therapy with medications and there are chelation um, therapy with natural products. Um, chelation therapy is central to detoxifying heavy metals and it is an effective treatment for acute and higher exposure poisoning. So chelating uh, agents bind these metals, as I mentioned, and help remove them through the intestine. And uh, these uh, chelators will help metals, instead of recirculating in your body after they are removed from certain organs, they help remove them from the body altogether. Um, chelation therapy is normally done with EDTA or DMSA, um, also DMPA. Um, medications. Uh, these have some drawbacks such as a redistribution of heavy metals from one tissue to another, may lead to neurotoxicity or liver toxicity, and they may also cause some loss of essential minerals such as copper, calcium, and zinc. Therefore, you must monitor your um, mineral status when using these chelation um, therapies. Even though they are not given at the same time, because they chelate also vitamins and minerals, I do recommend still taking uh, vitamin and mineral supplements. They are crucial during the treatment period. Um, 
So you also want to drink sufficient water and consume a high fiber diet so you can have regular bowel movements, um, as I mentioned. So now let's talk about these natural chelators that I said, that they are very affordable and can be used easily. Number one is algae um, and other aquatic plants. They uh, can uptake toxic agents. I recommend consuming these foods once or twice a week. So if you like sushi, it's great. Also chlorella can detoxify mercury and other toxic chemicals such as uh, phthalates and um, plastic and insecticides. I recommend taking a chlorella supplement one or two times a week. Um, also man mangiferin um, uh, found in mangoes has a cell protective effect. I recommend consuming mangoes when uh, when they're in season or naturally dried mango pieces uh, when they are out of season or you can buy frozen mango and add them to shakes. Also cilantro, um, also known as coriander, has been shown to inhibit lead deposition in the bones. It's extremely important since lead competes with calcium in the body and about 95% of lead in the body is collected in mineralizing tissues such as bones and teeth. So I recommend growing cilantro in your garden or windowsill and consuming a few leaves daily. Whenever you see it, just take a few and put them in your mouth and, and eat them. Curcumin is also effective. Um, uh, it's an antioxidant that protects against mercury exposure and can be therapeutic um, for uh, mercury intoxication. I recommend taking curcumin supplements three times a week with pepperin um, to help uh, its absorption. You also want to focus on healthy bile flow, bile production and release must function well um, to help remove heavy metals from your body. You can enhance bile production and release um, and the release of bile into the digestive system with uh, milk thistle and myra. Uh, these herbs are not only uh, not only enhance bile flow but also protect the liver to help assist in detoxifying. You also want to eat foods high in sulfur. Sulfur is an essential mineral. Um, after calcium and phosphorus, it is our most body's most abundant mineral element. Sulfur um, molecules include methionine and, and um, amino acid uh, and cysteine, which is a non-essential amino acid. The methionine is essential. And the vitamins um, thiamine and biotin and uh, vitamin B5, pantothenic acid. Um, these are um, sulfurs are highly effective at absorbing heavy metals and preventing their recirculation in the body. Sulfur amino acids also support healthy cells by influencing their capacity to detoxify um, toxic compounds and free radicals. Cysteine has been observed to bind to heavy metals and uh, reduce oxidative stress. Foods that are highest in sulfur-based amino acids include broccoli, walnuts, sunflower seeds, oats, legumes, uh, garlic, onions, leeks. I recommend consuming at least one uh, food from this list uh, daily. Also, alpha-lipoic acid is an organosulfur uh, compound. Um, it helps regenerate other antioxidants, including vitamin C and vitamin E and glutathione. And uh, there are many other um, uh, compounds that have antioxidant potential which is crucial for heavy metal detoxification um, because uh, chronic inflammation hinders um, successful heavy metal detoxification and antioxidants help reduce the inflammation in the body. Also phospholipids um, found in cell membranes um, are subject to damage by heavy metals so maybe you want to take a liposomal supplement uh, highly beneficial for heavy metal detoxification because they are rich in phospholipids that help repair the cell membranes. So, and also they they also help promote healthy bile flow. Now, to conclude, heavy me metals are all around us. You may be exposed to them when you're walking, even barefoot outdoors, or drinking from water from unreliable sources. You can't always avoid exposure, but you can limit it. Be mindful of your environment and the water and foods that you eat, especially fresh fish um, that may have been caught in an area with high levels of mercury in the water. Um, use methods that I mentioned above for detoxifying and I wish you health and happiness. So I hope you like this video. It's a little bit long, I'm sorry, uh, but there was a lot to cover. So if you did give it a thumbs up, 
and if you like uh, this type of content please um, uh, subscribe to my channel and visit my website thegorilladiet.com for anything to help you move your health and wellness to a better place for you thank you very much